Okay, here we go again. Welcome to MrKrauseMath.com. Hopefully you are finding these videos useful. Today we're going to be discussing two things. How to factor polynomial expressions. Um, more difficult polynomial expressions. I, I will be making another video shortly um, in my series. Um, I'm doing these sort of out of order, but I'm doing them so my students right now could use them. And I'm going to go back and do um, some videos on factoring. Um, I always say that factoring is one of the F words you're allowed to use in my classroom because for many students, um, factoring is just not something they enjoy. And, you know, most math teachers have to put up with the, the questions. When are we going to ever use this? Why do I have to learn this? How is this going to help me when I go grocery shopping? Um, it's not. Uh, for the short term, it's going to help you do well on the test. For the longer term, it'll help you past the course. But as a student, you got to stop thinking so short-sighted. Um, we don't teach you for what you need to know now. We teach you for what you're going to need to know in the future. And understanding how to manipulate numbers, play around with numbers, toss them up in your head, figure out their products and sums, figure out what perfect squares are, um, is, is just a skill that's incredibly valuable. Um, later on, when you get into physics, and chemistry and some of the upper level mathematics courses and your engineering courses where you're starting to solve problems, real life problems, you don't want to be bogged down with what, what I like to call the simple math. And you're going to call it simple someday as well if you continue on in this field. But you don't want to get bogged down with that simple math. You want to be able to manipulate numbers without or you want to be able to solve, excuse me, real life problems in some of those harder level courses without getting bogged down in some of this tr more trivial math. So that's what we're going to work on today. Um, if factoring is not your thing and you're not very good with factoring, maybe um, you're going to want to, and at some point I'll put down when I get this video made, I'll put it in the show notes, uh, that you're going to want to look at my factoring video. Now, I do not do factoring by guessing um, by any tricks. Uh, I know there's people out there, they do an X method. You know, I used to have a teacher that we used to teach with, used to call it slip and slide, factor by grouping. We're going to do a little bit of factor by grouping today because we have to. Um, some of the people I've worked with call it friendly factoring. It's not my favorite. Um, my favorite is guess and check. I think, especially for very, um, very smart kids, should be able to factor very quickly because they can manipulate numbers very quickly in their head. Um, kids that are just decent or better than decent in math, you shouldn't have any problems playing around with numbers. Most of us are not giving you some crazy numbers to factor. Um, but I think you should be able to use guess and check. So that's all you're going to get from me today. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully you find it useful. Uh, if you have any more questions at the end of the video or you know, pause and stop the video, I know I go rather quickly, but you can always pause the video, take a look at the problem, see if you can do it on your own, and then see if you need help afterwards. Um, but hopefully you find this useful. All right, long, let's get started. First problem. All right, first problem. Anytime, anytime you're going to attack a factoring question, the very first thing you must ask yourself, is there a greatest common factor? Is there something that they all have in common? And in this case, there is. They all have an X in common. So I'm going to factor out an X. And what I'm left with is X squared plus X plus 6. Once I'm done with that, then I can look to see if I want to further, or if I can, factor this into the product of two binomials. Not, we'll, we'll just keep this monomial coming, but oftentimes you're going to be able to factor this in, again, the product of two binomials. Well, if that's true, I'm going to have to find two numbers that multiply to 6, positive 6, be careful, it's positive 6, and add up to positive 1. Now, in the past, I've had many kids that say, boom, add up to 1, woohoo, no problem. Those add up to 1. Positive 3, negative 2, they add up to positive 1, I'm done. Be careful, they still have to multiply to positive 6. And these don't multiply to positive 6, they multiply to negative 6. So actually, you're done. There's really nothing else in this particular problem you could be doing. That's finished, you're finished. There's nothing else to do. All right, let's take a look at problem 2. And again, if I'm going quickly, slow down, stop, pause, rewind, whatever you need to do. 
Um, that's the beauty of video. That's better than being in class. You can't rewind your teacher, although it would be kind of funny to watch. Again, we're looking for a GCF. And we can take out a GCF. We're left with x squared plus x minus 4. And if I was going to continue to factoring, again, I think you're smart enough to see that if I need two numbers that multiply to negative 4 that add up to 1, I'm not going to find anything. So really, there's nothing else to do with that. That problem's over with. And I made the first three all like this. This one's got a GCF of 2x. And I'm left with x squared plus 4x minus 49. My GCF in this case was 2x. One way to multiply to 49 is, in this case, negative 49 would be a negative 7 and a positive 7. Or a negative 1 and a positive 49, but that's not going to get you 4. So let's start. Let's get going. Let's start talking about problems that really are more meaningful. Let's look at this one. Uh, the first thing I'm going to look for is a GCF. I look at all these. It's a cubic. I'm looking for a GCF, and they don't have one. I apologize for making a mistake. This was a problem that didn't have really an answer, but it will now. So I can't do this. And here's what you want to do. Whenever you notice there are four terms like this, what we're going to do is we're going to look at two terms individually, and we're going to group those two together, and we're going to group those two together. Now, these two have a GCF. Their GCF is x squared, and I'm left with x minus 3. Next step, and this is always true, you're going to copy down whatever this sign is. Excuse me. My nose is a little itchy today. You're going to copy down this, this sign. In this case, it's a negative. And you're going to look at the next two terms, the 9 and the 27. And you want to pull out the GCF. Now, you've got to train yourself. You have to look for the largest number. Not just any number, but the largest number. Uh, hopefully, you see that it's a 9. Many kids uh, oftentimes will put a 3 out there, which is a, a GCF, but it's not the greatest common factor. And when I do that, I'm left with x and 3. But notice they have to multiply to positive 27. Well, a negative times a negative will give me a positive. The other thing you want to do when you're doing factor by grouping, when you're going to group these two together, is you want to make sure that when you're done, that each of these terms, now the term here is x squared times x minus 3, and this term is 9 times x minus 3, that they have a common factor. And it's going to be these parentheses, and that these parentheses are exactly the same. Otherwise, this doesn't work. All right, so here's what I do. I look at this first term. I look at this, and I say, okay, what does this have and this have in, these have in common? And both of these terms have an x minus 3 in common. Okay, when I take that away from them, or I factor it out, I'm left with x squared minus 9. Don't stop. Keep looking. As long as you have a squared, there's a potential that you have to keep factoring. And in this case, it should be clear that this is going to give you the difference of perfect squares. There's nothing to do with x minus 3. It's just x minus 3. But this here, this set of parentheses, can be factored into the product of two binomials. It is the difference of perfect squares. x times x gives me x squared. 3 times 3 gives me 9. 1's plus. 1's minus. And we're done. This problem is pretty much the same. It's not much different. Um, giving you another practice with factor by grouping. Uh, there is one small change. I'll show it to you in a second. Um, in this case, if I group these first two together, I can take out an x squared. And I'm left with an x plus 2. Copy over that sign. Very vital part of this factor by grouping. Look to these two. And I think most of you see that a 25 goes into both. So I'm going to factor out a 25. Now, if you're that person that's already pretty good at math, you're probably noticing that I got perfect squares all over the place. It becomes important. Start recognizing perfect squares. Uh, x and 2. Now, here's where you got to be careful. If I put a minus here, if I'm just not thinking, I put a minus there. First of all, do my parentheses match? Does this match this? No. 
second of all, what is negative 25? This negative 25 times negative 2. That's not negative 50. I need it to be negative 50. So this has to be plus 2. Now I get my negative 50 and the parentheses match. Well, now that they have a common factor, and the common factor in this case is x plus 2. And again, if I take that away from both terms, I'm left with x squared minus 25. Keep looking. Keep, keep looking. If you have a squared, there's a very good chance you're going to have to keep factoring. And yes, of course, if you look at x squared minus 25, it's the difference of perfect squares. And you're going to end up with x and x, 5 and 5. One's plus, one's minus. Now, if you haven't seen the difference of perfect squares, if you don't understand those, this probably isn't going to be a video you want to keep going with because that's just one of those things as a math student at trig level you should be able to do on your own. Um, but if you can't, go see my other video, which should be up soon, um, on how to factor um, binomials, trinomials, and all kinds of different factoring. Uh, it'll be helpful for you. All right, off to six. Oh, yeah, every time we see an x to the fourth, it gives, kind of gives us a little freak. We, you know, get all freaked out about x to the fourth, but x to the fourth is a perfect square. Any even exponent is a perfect square. x to the eighth is x to the fourth times x to the fourth. x to the twentieth is x to the tenth times x to the tenth. As long as it's an even exponent, it's a perfect square. So in this case, I have the difference of perfect squares again. x squared and x squared. Now, you have to be careful with this one. Uh, I did this one on purpose. I put this one in here because I want you to get careful. It's plus 5 and minus 5. I did, when I did this in class in the past, I'll have a kid put plus 25 and minus 25, and they're like, ooh, x squared minus 25. I have to keep factoring because that's the difference of perfect squares. But it's really 5 and 5. That's what gives me the 25. And neither of these are perfect squares. 5 and 5 aren't perfect squares, so I'm done. There's nothing left to do with that problem. It's all over with. All right, here we go. In this case, I can take out a 2. I'll take out a 2, and I'm left with x to the 4th minus 16. Now, this one's going to require a little bit more work. We'll keep this 2 coming along. We're going to factor this into two binomials because these are the difference of perfect squares. x squared times x squared is x to the 4th. 4 and 4 gives me 16. One's plus, one's minus. Keep looking, keep looking. Train yourself when you have squared to keep looking. X squared, my, wait a second, this is positive. You do not, there's no such thing as the, the sum of perfect squares. You cannot continue to factor it. That's all you can do. That's done. But this one you can keep factoring. It's X and X, 2 and 2, 1's plus and 1's minus. Now again, a few minutes ago, at the beginning of the video, I told you one of the reasons you play around with numbers is you just become so comfortable with manipulating numbers that they start to become second nature for you. If you look at this next problem, 256 looks like a huge number. Huge number. It's not very big. It's not very big. It's actually quite small. But how many of you would recognize that as a perfect square? Probably not now. But as you go on through math, you start to recognize numbers and you start to see patterns and you start to see, oh yeah, I know 256. That's 16 squared. So if 256 is 16 squared, that means the GCF must be 16. X to the fourth minus 16. So in this case, my GCF was 16. I can take out a 16. Now, there's no sense in factoring X to the fourth minus 16 again. I just did that. I just did that. So these problems are very similar. This end result would be x squared plus 4 x plus 2 x minus 2. Very similar to this problem. Alright, let's keep going. Oh, this problem had a mistake. Didn't see that. Alright, we're going to factor this problem. Very first thing we look for is a GCF. Since the 40 to 5 does not have an x, there is no GCF. We're not going to go by grouping here because it's a trinomial. 
So what we're going to do is we are going to factor it as if, you know, and again, if you like to look at it as a squared and just a plain old x here, like this would be x squared and this would be just a plain old x, think about it that way, if that helps. Um, I don't know if you need to do that. X, really, it's just going to be x squared and x squared. We're going to think about this 45. Now, that's a positive 45. This is where I get into my factoring stuff. In order to multiply to a positive number, we need a negative times a negative or a positive times a positive. Um, in this case, because I want them to add up to negative 14, I need two negatives. And I'm not going through all the factoring. Hopefully you're getting good at factoring by now. You should know I could use 1 and 45, 3 and 15, 5 and 9. Boom, there you go. That's what you're looking for, 5 and 9. 5 and 9. Negative 9 and negative 5 add up to negative 14, and they multiply to positive 45. If I kept going now, I would be making a mistake because I notice I have the difference of perfect squares here. Now, this is not the difference of perfect squares, so I'm doing nothing with this. I'm just going to leave it. But this certainly is the difference of perfect squares. It's x plus 3, x minus 3. Finished. All right, let's get over to here. My problems are numbered differently. Um, okay, let's take out a 3x squared. And when I take a 3x squared out of that, I think that's a different problem. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I'm left with x minus 2. Okay. Let me make sure I did that. Took out an x squared. I'm left with, wait a second here, x squared. See, I shouldn't have been looking over there. Right, that's not a GCF. Let's try that again. Let's go back. Should have been using red, making big mistakes like that. I'm going to take out an x cubed. And I'm left with x minus 2x. No, x minus 2. The problem with it is, is this one, the only GCF here would give me x squared plus 2. And this problem is going to turn out to be a bust. So... That's probably why I don't see it on my sheet, my notes over here, because I must have taken that out, and I just didn't realize it. This one, this one will be fine. Okay, let's group these two together. I see this one in my notes. So, we're going to take out an x squared, and I'm left with x minus 7. Copy over the sign, plus. Out of these two, I'm going to take out a 4, and I'm left with x minus 7. When you take out a positive 4, that's kind of simple. Uh, again, they have a common factor of x minus 7, so my common factor is going to be x minus 7. And I'm left with, when I take that away from both of them, x squared plus 4. Sum of perfect squares, no such thing. I'm done. There's my answer. Let's take a look at this problem. We're going to factor out an x squared out of here, and I'm left with x plus 5. Copy over the sign minus. Out of these two, I'm going to take out a 9. Again, in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, perfect square. Here we go again. Uh, and I'm left with x plus 5, because they have to multiply to negative 45. And negative 9 times positive 5 is negative 45. So the common factor in this case is x plus 5. 5, and I'm left with x squared minus 9, which can be continued to factor x plus 5, x plus 3, x minus 3. If you're getting the hang of this and you'd like to get to the solving of quadratics, jump ahead. You're more than welcome. I'm going to go through a number of different problems. I might skip a few. I might skip a few get to some of the more exciting ones. Uh, but as a matter of fact, well, let's skip right here. We'll go to this one. This one looks pretty tricky. Out of these first two, I can take out a 25, again, perfect square, and an x squared. Still a perfect square. And I'm left with x minus 4. 
Now, this is why this problem is particularly difficult. I'm going to take out the minus. But what do x and 4 really have in common? The only common factor that they both have is 1. 1 times x is x, 1 times 4 is 4. So in this case, the common factor is 1, and yes, you have to take out a 1. Actually, what we're taking out in this case is a negative 1. So again, we want to be very careful. Negative 1 times x is negative x. Negative 1 times negative 4 is positive 4. All right, again, the parentheses match. We're happy about that. We'll leave that as an x minus 4 here to begin with. Next, we will put 25x squared minus 1. Do you see the difference of perfect squares? It's not what we've used to, but you should have done problems like this in the past. What times what gives me 25x squared? Well, 25 is just 5 and 5, so it's 5x. 5x, 1 and 1. 1's plus, 1's minus. Finished. Well, this is a cool problem over here in this case. So this one should go pretty quickly. In this case, the GCF is 2x. Now, be careful when you take out a GCF. Uh, this one I'm left with 16x to the 4th. But I can't just leave it 16x to the 4th because if I distribute, that'll only give me this term. How am I going to get this term? What am I going to multiply by to get that term? And what am I going to multiply by is negative 1. Negative 1. So do you recognize these? These are both perfect squares as well. 16 is 4 times 4, and 1 is 1 times 1. So again, we have the difference of perfect squares. This seemingly simple problem turns out to be a much, much more difficult problem than you actually thought. Um, this is the difference of perfect squares. So it's going to be 4x plus 1, 4x minus 1. Excuse me, x squared. That's why I said x squared. Because x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. Well, how many of all see that this is now, again, the difference of perfect squares? So this very simple-looking problem is going to turn into something rather complex. 2x, 4x squared plus 1. And this is the difference of perfect squares. 2x, 2x, plus 1, minus 1. Wow. Binomial turned into this crazy thing? That's crazy. This factoring is, you know, my kids, when they first saw this one, they kind of freak out about it, but most of them are like, oh, I got it. It's x squared and x squared. That's what multiplies to x to the fourth. Then I'm going to say, okay, I need two numbers that multiply to 6 that add up to 7. 2 and 3 don't add up to 7, but 1 and 6 do. Now, they, they're, this is positive, so they both have to be positive or both have to be negative. In this case, since this is positive, they're both going to be positive. And you're actually finished, because there's no such thing as the sum of perfect squares. There's nothing we can do with that. Let's see if any of these are rather exciting problems. Okay, this one's going to turn out to be kind of a cool problem. Um, the GCF here is x squared. I can take out an x squared, and I'm left with 35x squared plus 12x. This is x to the fourth. x squared plus 1. Hmm. Okay. Now, when the number in front is composite, that just means it's not prime, which means it has more than one factor, more than two factors, one in itself. It's a little bit more tricky, but I did try to make this one easy on you. There's only two ways to multiply to 35, really two ways, or two sets of numbers, 1 and 35 and 7 and 12. Now, if you're thinking about 7 and 12, uh, excuse me, 7 and 5, doesn't 7 and 5 add up to 12? And I think that would probably be a more meaningful use or attempt. So I'm going to try 5x. Again, this is guess and check. I'm assuming this is going to be right. There's only one way to multiply to 1, 1, and 1. This is positive, and this is positive, so these both have to be positive. 
And that is, in fact, the answer. 5x times 1, 7x times 1. 5x and 7x is 12x squared. Now, what do you think? Am I right? Did I do it right? Can you find any mistake I might have made? I like to sometimes make mistakes and see if my students can find them. Sometimes I do them on purpose. Sometimes they're completely on accident. This one, they were on purpose. Can you find it? Pause it. I'm about to tell you. Very simple. All right, here it is. Should have been squareds because my original was x to the fourth. Just be careful. All right, so this one here, again, we're going to look. How many of you all know three? the rule, divisibility rule for three? If you add up the digits and that's divisible by three, the number is divisible by three. One plus five is six, divisible by three. Seven plus two is nine, divisible by three. One plus zero plus eight, 9 divisible by 3. So in this case, my GCF is 3, and I can also take out an X. Binomial. Or excuse me, I have a trinomial. Uh, 5X to the 4th minus 24X minus 36. Okay, this one's not too bad. Not too easy, though, either. Uh, it's got to be 5x squared and x squared because that's the only way to multiply to 5x squared. All righty, here's where our guess and check comes into play. We're going to try 36. Now, I always tell kids to try the two closest numbers together, 6 and 6. I'm going to try those first, see if I can get those to work. 6 and 6. 30. And 6. If I take 30 minus 6, don't I get 24? Sure I do. Sure I do. 30 minus 6 is 24. And that's what I want. So, that's what I need. But, 1's got to be plus and 1's got to be minus. Now, this 5 got multiplied by this 6. That needs to be the negative. Because that would make negative 30. And this positive 6 times this x squared would give me positive 6x squared. And I'm finished since this is not the difference of perfect squares. There is my answer. Oh my gosh, that's awful. I'm having a hard time. So there's my answer. Let's go to blue. I'm tired of looking at red. Red always makes me feel like I made a mistake. This one's kind of fun. <laughs> it's math. It's not that much fun. But anyway, uh, we're going to do by grouping. We're back to four terms. We've got to do by grouping. So in this case, I can take out an x squared. And I'm left with x plus 1. Copy of the sign plus. Now, again, what can I take out of x and 1? Just a 1. And I'm left with x plus 1. But I'm okay with that. Because now I have a common factor. I have a common factor of x plus 1. So I take that away from both of them. That's my first factor. x plus 1. And I'm left with x squared plus 1. Now, x squared plus 1 is the sum of perfect squares, not the difference of perfect squares. All right, let's take a look at this one. This one looks kind of interesting. There is no GCF because this does not have a 3. So I know it's got to be 3x squared and x squared. So two numbers that are closest are 4 and 6. Now I can't put a 6 in this parentheses because if I did, this set of parentheses would have a GCF, 3. 3 would go into both. And since my original problem did not have a GCF, this can't have a GCF. So if, I'm, if this is going to work, the 6 has to go here. And the 4 has to go here. Well, that's 18 and 4. Clearly, that will not give me X. So, didn't work. Go back to red. Let's try 3 and 8. Well, I can't put a 3 here because that would have a GCF. I can put the 3 here, and I can put the 8 here. Now, when I multiply, this gives me 9, and this gives me 8. Isn't 9 minus 8 1? But I want negative 9, or I want negative 1, so I need the 9 to be negative and the 8 to be positive. 
and getting rid of my little marks. Why does that do that? I didn't touch that other thing. There's my answer. Not the difference of perfect squares down there, so we're finished. Okay. Now we're going to move on. We're now going to start solving. Whenever you see the word solve, that means you need to come up with an answer. Not just factor it. You need to actually come up with an answer. All of them should be set equal to zero. Unless you're using factor by... Um, completing a square, which I'll make some videos on that as well, you're going to just, you're going to make sure that it's equal to zero. So the work for factoring is still the same. Here we're going to take out an x squared, and I'm left with x plus 6. I'm going to take out a 4. I'm actually taking out a negative 4. Be careful with that. We're not going over that again. And I'm left with x plus 6. Well, that's good. My parentheses match. So my first set of parentheses is going to be x plus 6. And my second set, when I take those away, is x squared minus 4 equals 0. I'm still not done factoring. This one gives me x plus 6. This one gives me x plus 2 x minus 2 because it's the difference of perfect squares. I am now ready to solve, to get solutions, roots, zeros. And I don't go through this baby work. I'll do another lesson on that earlier. Uh, the, the x value that would make this 0 is negative 6. The x value that would make this 0 is negative 2. And the x value that would make this set of parentheses 0 would be 2. So my solution set is negative 6, negative 2, and 2. Okay, come over here. I think they have a 4 as a GCF, so let's take out a 4, and I'm left with x squared plus 10x minus 11 equals 0. Now this one's going to get kind of crazy, so follow along with me. Taken out of four. Uh, yeah, you guys probably just saw that mistake. And this one wasn't done on purpose. Let's go back. This should be x to the fourth. I didn't take out any x's, and this should be x squared. I knew this problem was going to be a little crazy, but it, I got ahead of myself. x squared, x squared. Only one way to multiply to 11. It's prime. 11 and 1. They have to add up to positive 10. So that means the larger one has to be positive. The smaller one has to be negative. Yes, this is the difference of perfect squares. So we have to keep going. x plus 1. x minus 1. x squared. That doesn't look much like a squared. Plus 11. Now. Hopefully by now you've talked about imaginary numbers. Because we're going to have a little issue with them right now. <laughs> Um, we're going to set each of these equal to 0. Now, this one we can't do anything with, and I don't really care about that one. This one gives me x equals negative 1. This one gives me x equals positive 1. But this one's a different story. Uh, I actually have to solve this. x squared plus 11 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 11 and bring it to both sides. I don't show that work anymore. x squared equals negative 11. And now I'm going to take the square root. And hopefully your teachers have taught you that when you take the square root, you must put a plus or minus. And this gives me actually x equals plus or minus. Now the square root of negative 11. I can't do anything with 11. Nothing. But hopefully by now you've learned that the square root of negative is i. And then I just leave the square root of 11. So that's two of my answers. That's actually two answers, and here are my other two answers. All right, we're moving on. We only got four problems left. Remember what I said a few minutes ago? In order to solve these, it must be set equal to zero. So we're going to bring that 10x squared over, and I'm going to subtract it and bring it over to the other side. And notice I'm putting it in standard form. I'm not just putting it in it's just a random place. It's in standard form. Um, of course, I, for some reason, have a love affair with squares and keep writing squares instead of the fourth. Again, that was not on purpose. But I did catch it, so that's okay. There are two ways to multiply to 9. 
9 and 1, or 3 and 3. I think you see that we have to use the 9 and 1. Now, it's an interesting problem here. This tells me the signs have to be the same. This is going to tell me they're both going to be negative, because negative 1 plus negative 9 is positive 9. Now, if I keep factoring this, this is going to give me x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 3, x minus 3 equals 0. A lot of factoring on this one. So I get four solutions. x equals negative 1, x equals positive 1, x equals negative 3, and x equals positive 3. So I'm going to do plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. That's just me being lazy. All right, we're going to bring this cubed over. Um, so we're going to rewrite it as 2x to the 5th minus 14x cubed. Notice I'm putting that in the middle because we've got to keep things in order. 24x. And I'm going to set this equal to 0. In this case, my GCF is 2x. So I'm going to take out a 2x. And I'm left with x to the 4th minus 7x squared plus 12x. Did I take everything out right? I think I did. Uh, equals 0. Oh, what do I get an x there for? Come on. It's getting late. It's getting late. There we go. No x. We got red now. So we're going to do 2x, and let's see if this thing factors. Yeah, this one's going to factor easy. x squared and x squared. The signs have to be the same. In this case, they're both going to be negative. So minus and minus. Minus 3, minus 4. And yes, we have the difference of perfect squares again. Again, I told you that was going to come up a few times today. x plus 2 x minus 2. Now we're going to get a bunch of answers here, kids. That's the hard one right there. This one, what value would make this 0? 2 times what? Well, 2 times 0. So 0 is one of my answers. I'll come back to this one. This one is x equals negative 2, and this one's x equals positive 2. This one we actually have to solve because it's got a squared. So we're going to do x squared minus 3 equals 0 or x squared equals 3. And let me change colors so you can see this better. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And when I take the square root, i got to put a plus or minus. So my answer here is x equals plus or minus radical 3. Last two problems. And we are finished with this lesson. Looks kind of tricky. I'm going to group these two together. It's got four terms, so we're going to do it by grouping. Group these two together. Let's see if I can not make a mistake here. We're going to take out an x to the fourth. And I'm left with x squared minus 4. Already a perfect square. Minus. And we're going to take out a 9. We're really taking out a negative 9. So we get x, min x squared minus 4. Again, negative 4 times negative 9 is positive 36. So they have an x squared minus 4 in common. And when I take that out, I'm left with x to the 4th minus 9. <laughs> this this problem is such a pain. All right, so this one's going to give me x plus 2, x minus 2. This one's going to give me x squared minus 3, and x squared plus 3. All right, so these answers are going to get crazy. These are easy. X equals negative 2. X equals positive 2. I don't know why I put a positive. This one gives me X squared minus 3 equals 0, or X squared equals 3. Take the square root, put a plus or minus, and I get X equals plus or minus 3. And then we got this one. X squared plus 3 equals 0. We're going to bring the 3 over. So we get x squared equals negative 3. Take the square root, take the square root, put a plus or minus, And I get x equals 
plus or minus. Now you can't do anything with the three, but these, the negative is i. The square root of negative one is i. Square root of three. Hopefully we've discussed imaginaries. Uh, I'm going to bring this over because it's got the lower degree so that the, so that the higher degree is positive. That's always in my best interest. Put them in standard form. I'm going to factor out a 9. No, I'm not. I am not going to factor out a 9. 4 plus 8 is 12. 9 does not go into that. So what I actually am going to factor out is a 3x cubed. And I'm left with 16x squared minus 9. That's the difference of perfect squares, so I'm going to factor that. 3x cubed, 4x plus 3, and 4x minus 3. I haven't had a problem like this before. Here are my three answers. This one's going to give me x equals 0. This one I have to solve. 4x plus 3 equals 0. You actually have to solve this 7th grade equation. Subtract 3 from both sides, so I get 4x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 4, and I get x equals negative 3 over 4. And I'm going to solve this one, 4x minus 3, in the exact same way, except in this case I'm going to get x equals positive 3 over 4. I think you can figure that one out. And I'm finished. That is solving quadratics, solving higher degree polynomials, factoring quadratics, factoring higher degree polynomials. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, again, if you need more help with factoring, there'll be another factoring video posted shortly. And uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in. If you're finding these videos useful, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. Throw a few likes in there if you want to. That's fine. Um, I will be updating my website, mrkrausmaths.com, very shortly. And hopefully you'll find that a little bit more useful to use. Uh, I guess that's it. That's me, Mr. Krause, signing off. Have a good night.